Centos Center in Cincinnati, Ohio. Our Big East matchup about to get started. The Providence Friars and the Musketeers of Xavier. Now there's still time to enter the Fox Super 6 College Hoops Contest. Answer six questions about the Friars and the Musketeers. This game for your chance to win a $1,000 prize. Download the app and enter now. Take a look at the Jeep starting lineups coming your way. Brought to you by Jeep Grand Cherokee. There's one notable change. Alan Breed will be in for Jared Bynum. Bynum is out with a groin strain. Got hurt in the Creighton game recently, which was a dynamite finish. Providence almost able to pull that one out. But that's going to be an area of concern for Ed Cooley, this young man getting the start out of Powder Springs, Georgia. You know that he likes to change defenses so much, Donnie, and uh, you got to be aware as a young player out there and with Scruggs and so many other great players in that backcourt for Xavier. A lot of responsibility on this young man. Yeah, it's, it, you got to rely on your veterans to kind of lead him if you're Ed Cooley. He said, listen, if we can't leave our young guy out on an island. This is a kid averaging about 11 minutes a game. And this is what Ed Cooley did not want. He doesn't want David Duke handling the ball as much as as I probably David Duke wants. He needs him more off the ball. It's going to be big for Breed to kind of be that guy to be confident, solid with the ball, so he can keep David Duke off the ball. The running man uniforms being donned from the 80s and 90s, going back to the Pete Gillen skip crosser period. And the opening tap is controlled to the Friars, our officials, Brian O'Connell, Lamar Simpson, and Clarence Armstrong. And you see right away they're trying to get that ball inside to see what Nate Watson wants to do downstairs, but it's got to get back to him. You can't let him touch it once and then hide it from him. Nichols, that one rolls off the rim and it's pulled down by Nate Johnson. I would say that's a win, <laughs> that possession for Xavier. <laughs> Indeed. That one was knocked away by Duke. It'll be controlled on this end of the floor. Colby Jones, a young man that's highly touted out of Mountain Brook in the uh, backcourt out of the state of Alabama. Fremantle in some traffic, giving it up to Jones. Well, two-man game is Carter gives it up and rattling home the three is Nate Johnson from downtown. And that's all set up by Carter catching that ball down in the post. And Providence is one of those teams that, as aggressive as they are, sometimes over-aggressive, you get stuck in that help spot and you can't recover to that open shooter. Watson working a little pick and roll, but Green could not find him. Duke. You better check him. Coming in, this is a young man that's 41% from downtown, and he's not bashful. Jones, a little beautiful curl maneuver with the rock in hand to give Xavier the two-point lead. And that's what I was talking about, leaving your young fella Breed on an island. That was one-on-one -on -one defense. It's just tough in all of college basketball, but in, in Big East play, you have to be able to be there for a teammate, especially a guy who doesn't get a lot of minutes. Pretty good show there defensively by Jason Carter coming out. He's a really smart basketball player, 25 and white. There's another triple. Jimmy Nichols warming up out of Conway, South Carolina. And you can see what David Duke's effect is on the game. You're, you're leaning that way to help on him left of the floor, and that leaves guys wide open opposite. Fremantle, a good passer going inside out, working with Colby Jones and waits for the double team. And then we got steps. The help defense helps cause the turnover. That's just a good turn. Where's the help? Down low, no one there. Well, he is a, an outstanding talent. He was thought of as a possible starter the moment he was recruited. Travis Steele now in his third season. Now, he has a way, Donnie, of uh, getting old and staying old, and he does it with good young recruits like a guy like Jones, but then also transfers and grad transfers. On the other end, Providence unable to get it to go. A.J. Reeves comes up empty. 
Plus, you get those young guys like Zach Fremantle who are, they play more mature. Yep. Than their Absolutely. Year. There's an example of it right there. There's a foul inside against the Friars. That goes against Watson. Or Wiltshire, I beg your pardon, his first. Excuse me, Watson picking it up. There you see Travis getting his uh, third year, and, and he talked to you and me about that in our Zoom conversation, Donnie, and he was very candid that, uh, yeah, moving from the second chair, being <laughs> behind Chris Mack and a part of this program for such a long time, I mean, you can make a case he's a lifer here, and uh, they've they've spawned many great head coaches. It's been a cradle of coaches in the past. He's he's a guy that sees himself in a destination job. It's such a, a quick transition. Nicer suits, more square footage <laughs> at home. Yeah. You know, it's it's but it, there, there's some pressure to it. I think this year, more than the last two, it's really starting to look like what Travis Steele envisioned when he took over a couple of years ago. No doubt. They play together. They're unselfish. You don't have guys playing against each other. And it happens on teams from year to year. All the way end to end goes Scruggs. He's got that quick burst, and he's sharing the ball very well. He loves this team, and you can tell his leadership skills have really improved. His game's evolved, and it's interesting how the, the college game in general evolves. I'd say high school as well. You know, Scruggs came in as, you know, grinded out kind of shooting guard type player and now they're saying he's a point guard for players we want to be called just basketball players you know I don't think you want to be in uh, he's a, a two man he's a four he's a set I think if someone says to me that the greatest compliment is he's just a great basketball player and I think Scruggs is turning into yeah. to that not just a point guard not a shooting guard just an all-around good player a foul by the way was on Reed his first David Duke operating in the backcourt with the youngster. Reed. Ed Cooley told us, you know, those switching defenses we're going to have to be able to attack with David Duke out there. Yeah. That ball just has to keep moving. You know it's going to find him. Well, preseason first team all Big East, and he's been playing like it mm -hmm. all season long. That steps. As Scruggs was trying to do a little too much that time. Second turnover committed. How about the new spelt? Ed Cooley, huh? Dropped about 52. Life on a treadmill. I mean, he has been working out, keeping himself in shape. You know, he's had a bad back. That uh, fourth to fifth uh, cervical vertebra has been a problem for him. Good to see him looking so good. There's a foul underneath. Spotted by Clarence Armstrong. David Duke, you talked about it. All Big East preseason playing like it all season. They're going to need it from him today. He can really stretch you out. The Duke. <laughs> 2018, well, it was the year someone other than Villanova won the Big East outright. <laughs> it happened here February 28th of 2018. Gooden had 18, Quentin Gooden, and uh, Xavier clinched a share of the Big East title with the victory. They would later go on to win the league outright with a win at DePaul in the season finale. But Donnie, this is the part we really want you to see. Look at what this building looked like as Chris Mack raised the Big East trophy. Wow. Boy, do we want to see that again one day. Man, oh, man. And I know you're in love with these uniforms, speaking of uh, nostalgia. Oh, I love it. And listen, every time I walk in the building, I find their radio guy, Byron Larkin. <laughs> to me, that he is the godfather of Xavier basketball. Scored 2,696 points in his career. And let me just remind people, this was, this was back in the mid-'80s. Yeah. He only had three-point line two years. So I always have to go give love to Byron Larkin. These are his <laughs> uniforms that they're wearing. Double dribble committed by the Friars. That's their second turnover, so each with a pair as we get this thing underway. Providence leading by two. Tim Brando, Donnie Marshall, happy to have you with us. A little basketball appetizer before a, a day of playoff football here on Fox. Carter posting up, working on Nichols Jr. Smart, wise choice. 
just could not get it to go. Nichols is long. Gant, same thing. So, you know, Carter's going to have to try to use more of his girth, his body, to get into them than just fading away because they can defend that. Nichols unable to get that perimeter jumper to go, and he's saved your basketball. You know, Ed Cooley, I think, more than any other coach today, coaches old school in this conference, and by that I mean junks it up. You know, there's a little Roly Massimino in him. He will change defenses so often that it will make backcourt players think, even a veteran like Scruggs. And now Juan Odom is into the game, number 11. This is the youngster out of Alpharetta, Georgia. Well, Timmy, you throw into the mix that he's got athletes. They're big, they're long, and, and that, that allows you to be able to change some things up. And it's, it's hard playing against big guys in general. There's Griffin off of the dime dropped by Jones. And the foul is committed by Nichols, his first. But you're right, Ed Kuhl is another one of those guys who just, he'll tell you exactly how he feels. Yeah. <laughs> no holds barred. He said, listen, this is, I like our team, which every coach says this time of year. But he also says, I know who we are. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the expectations, you know, aren't, aren't otherworldly. I get that we have to shoot the ball better. I get that, you know, we, we need three guys to really have some success. They've had two consistently. Yeah. They're waiting for that third guy. I think that third guy is A.J. Reeves. He doesn't play necessarily a lot of guys. He doesn't play nearly as many as Travis Steele, but he knows that they all have a role. There's a put back by Fremantle. And really, Nichols got caught jumping a little too soon for that rebound as opposed to blocking out and paid a price. Yeah, that's why those box out drills are important. You, you hold your guy behind you until that ball comes off or only you can get to it release too early that's what happens Nichols alley opening for the slam to Watson boy that was a perfectly lobbed pass by Nichols Friars by one you could see that one coming yeah and that, that's how you, you spread them out the hands are down. That makes that pass easy. Jones feeding Fremantle. Scruggs goes deep, and he finds Zach from deep. Fremantle, ooh, the iron on kind, and a follow by Griffin. That's just grown-up work down there. Find a space, carve it out, go get the ball and put it back. Now, that was a vintage series for Travis Steele. He loves the ball to be swung around with good spacing, and they had it there. Reed. There you go. Well, that'll give that young man some confidence. As we mentioned earlier, he played briefly in the game with, with Creighton, but this is a big moment for him without Bynum available. Fremantle can't get that one to go, and it's pulled down by A.J. Reeves with a quick outlet to David Duke. Providence has some nice flow right now, Timmy. They're, they're, the ball's not getting stuck. At times when they struggle, that ball stays on one side of the floor, and there's not really an outlet. And this right here is just you got to stay with your guy. Can't <laughs> anticipate pushing back. And then look, Griffin, no, you know, you, Someone has to find a body. It doesn't matter who it is, even if it's the smallest guy, and just try to take that big out. Noah Horkler is coming to the game, number 14 for the Friars out of Melbourne Beach, Florida. Duke, boy, he is just feeling it. I mean, you get the impression that every time it goes up, he's going to make it. He's got nine now. Providence doing far better from downtown than two-point range here in the early going. Scruggs. And he's going to draw the contact from Duke as he was going to attack the 10. Duke with his first foul. And, and that's the thing with ha having an aggressive team. When you tell your guys, listen, we're going to be aggressive. We're going to stay into them. Now as a player, you have to decide, okay, <laughs> when do I back off? And when do I get up into a guy? Because obviously, as much as you want to stay aggressive, and, and David Duke wants to be a two-way player, you have to be smart. You, know, you want to be aggressive without fouling. It's such a, a fine line for college players. Xavier has struggled a little bit with their shot. Uh, Travis Steele was not happy with their performance against St. John's, though they won it. It was an ugly victory. He 
he's looking for his team to gather more confidence on the offensive end. He's gone to his bench. Adam Kunkel, who had has already had his moment with a uh, near buzzer beating win, he's come out onto the floor, number five in white. Is that a thing, Timmy? An, an ugly win? Yeah. <laughs> well, I think it's like, Ed Cooley created the term. I think it's like an ugly par. I don't, yeah. I don't, I don't think that that's a thing. <laughs> pars are beautiful. Birdies are better, but pars are beautiful. Wins are. Wins are wins. That sounds like a that sounds like a third year head coach to me. Yeah, yeah. ugly win. Forget well, that. No style points. Little coach speak here. <laughs> Reed being dogged by Kunkel gives it up to Horkler. Well, that one goes off the heel. But here come the Musketeers the other way. Odom. Well, I think we got to reach. Goes against A.J. Reeves, his first. Time out. Only one. Timmy, we talk about Ed Cooley junking things up. It's a great look right here, catching the Xavier defense off guard. You got three defenders really ball watching, I would say. They're looking here, they're looking here, but they're not looking at this area. They lose sight, and this is just a terrific play as we roll it. Great pass and a great finish. And, and for Xavier, what you need is more ball pressure. Fremantle has to get way out there, more ball pressure, and there has to be someone on that back side defensively. Almost like that defensive back of saying, okay, here it comes. Get in there, take a charge. But that's a great offensive set. Again, Providence's offense is flowing this morning, which Ed Cooley told us, man, it's, it's early. Yeah, it is early. <laughs> so, you know, whoever, and I told Ed, whoever gets the sleep out of their eyes first is probably going to win this game. He said that he wanted to make sure that uh, his big guy, that Nate, got at least 15 shots. Yeah. And, you know, he's an unselfish player, too. So it's got to come naturally for them. There's Carl. Carter, that one goes begging off the front iron, and Watson collects the rebound. He's just such a, a nice piece to have, Nate Watson, because he continues to work. You know, the only time he gets lost is when his teammates forget that he's on the floor and they're trying to find their game. Already has four rebounds. That fall away is right in there, and you know, if David Duke stays this warm, if you're Travis Steele, you're thinking, please, I don't want a close game. I don't want it come to, coming down to a final possession. Kunkel, he's a confident shooter, and well, he should be. He's out to a really good start. On a Belmont team that won a couple of OVC titles. They could shoot it a little bit, huh? Oh, big time. You couldn't play for Rick Bird unless you could shoot. You, you'd have to make a layup yeah. and shoot a three. That was it. None of this in between game. He was recruited by Bird. Rick. Yeah, he, of course, has retired since uh, Buckle was there, but he originally got him. That foul is on Odom, his first. Providence has uh, shot at a really good clip. They're now 7 of 15. That was just their third two that uh, was made just a moment ago by Duke. They're four of seven from downtown, so they, they have more three-pointers than they have two-pointers at this stage and lead by Deuce. And it's a great lift for Ed Cooley early because they're not a great three-point shooting team. So to get those going a little bit, it opens the basket up mentally. Especially on the road, right? Yeah, and you just can't settle. That, that's the only thing I would say, because sometimes it turns into fool's gold, and they haven't done that. Up against the clock, Hookler with an air ball. Out of bounds, last touch by the Friars. He's just got such great size, Timmy. Obviously, Ed Cooley says he doesn't think he's had a player who's worked harder on his game. Being in the gym is, is like a, a religion to David Duke, and you can see it. But he's got the size also and the explosiveness to lift it and let, make that shot just a, another weapon for him. Ed Crosswell, number 21, has checked into the game. Another transfer for Providence. Odom is going to pick up an opportunity at the free throw line, and Cooley's like, huh? Is that a phantom foul? I, I, I didn't see a touch. It's going to go against Horkler. It's first. <laughs> Ed took umbrage to it. Already working uh, the veteran Brian O'Connell. Well, kind of with Ed. Yeah. They, they, <laughs> look, they, huh? There's no there there. <laughs> Well, it's early for the officials, too. By the way, it's, it's, you know when you're working with a veteran crew, when they 
they're searching for the broadcasters. Yeah. Like, where are they? They know we're going to name drop them. So they, O'Connell and Armstrong, were quick to give us a, a wave from downstairs. But not only that, they know we get the last word. That's true. <laughs> we're listening. Xavier has outdueled Providence at the free throw line. They've gotten there 10 times already, making six of them. That's how they've stayed in this game. A rare miss. And here comes Kunkel. How about that? Now he's deceptively fast. I mean, you may not think he can motor. And that time, Providence didn't respect his quickness. I think speed at times is, is misunderstood. If, when you're efficient with how you move, sometimes it could be misconstrued as, as being very fast. A pilfer for Odom. And this young man, who was 5 of 10 from the floor with 11 points in that game with St. John's, he played 28 minutes. Being heard from early. Musketeers by three, and their defense has really picked up. Look, Timmy, I wouldn't say he's lightning fast. I just think he's efficient in his movements. You know, he understands how to get to those angles. And Odom, this can't happen on the road. You know, there, coaches will always tell you that. It's, it's There's three things, turnovers, especially live ball turnovers, offensive rebounds, and, and missed free throws. Those are three things a road team cannot, you can't have if you want a chance to win a game. Well, a guy, a guy like Dwayne Odom can really help Scruggs and, and others in the backcourt. There's a beautiful defensive job by Duke, making sure that that one was knocked away. And uh, C.J. Wiltshire was hoping for an easy bucket. C.J. getting some playing time. Remember, this is a Xavier team. It's also without one of its players, as you see Crosswell with his first bucket. Ben Stanley tore his ACL, the transfer from Hampton out of Baltimore. Really sad because he had just become eligible, yeah. and he's unable to go. But that means C.J. Wiltshire Freshman from New Jersey is going to get some playing time. And from downtown, CJ, as if he knew we were talking about him, brings one. Beautiful release. Understands how to stay spaced. Travis Steele told us he's a high energy guy and a great teammate. Just the kind of guy you want. Go along with those transfers and grad transfers that have been brought in. Look at that quick hands action from Odom. Mm. Wilshire! Timeout Providence. Cooley unhappy as the Musketeers have been on quite a roll. Well, the youth at the point guard spot for Ed Cooley today already affecting him. And. Xavier taking advantage of it. Travis Steele, I think he's happy this morning. I've taken a seven point lead. We mentioned uh, Ben Stanley a moment ago. There you see him. And he just wants to be able to travel with the team and be around his guys. Really unfortunate what happened to him out for the season. But boy, has CJ Wiltshire been up to the standards that Travis Steele told us about. The young man's taking really good shots and knocked down a pair of threes already. It does hurt. Ben Stanley scored 749 points last year at half after 22 a game. I mean, he was only four games in and, and really looking forward to being a part of what's happening here at Xavier. They say the best thing about him was he just wanted to know he could still stay around the team yeah. when he was rehabbing. I mean, that tells you the kind of kid he is. He wants to be here for his team still, even though he can't play. Yeah, well, these protocols, it makes it tough. You know, you just don't yeah. know. Providence yielding this 13-2 uh, to two spurt and a quick timeout by Cooley. I suspect that um, Getting Duke another quick look would help them from an offensive standpoint. He had 11 quick points with three threes knocked down. I like that Ed Cooley did like he has no choice, <laughs> really, but I like that he keeps him Reed on the floor because you want to keep your young guys confident. You know, you, you don't want to yank them. That's old school basketball. You make a mistake, you're coming out. Think about it for a couple minutes. Ed Cooley understands, like you said, he's got some old school in him, but he yeah. also understands the kids of today. Uncle may have been about a step out of his range that time and came up empty, but Travis Steele is cheering him on. I think he loves the aggression, and he has not been bashful since coming into the game. Xavier by seven with seven to play in the opening half. 
Brett Gant, number one. Along with Alvin Breed, we mentioned that young man. And there's Watson. <laughs> uh, that was one that he'd love to have back as it rolls off the rim. He'll get to the free throw line. Carter picks up the foul. What I love most about him when he catches the ball, see, look at him. He's working. He's trying to push you, push the Carter up the lane. Then he's pointing, pass it there, and he doesn't play around with it. One power dribble, straight up and through. Were you surprised when when Travis told us, you know, Carter's going to have to deal with him? I, he said he would be a real critical part of the game defensively, dealing with Watson. Ed Cooley, I think, anticipates every game Watson's going to be doubled. You know. That, that you got to stay. You got to stay with who you are, though, Timmy. Right? I mean, if you haven't double teamed a guy all season, it's almost hard to, <laughs> to implement that a couple days before the game, right? Yeah, so you that. have to have confidence in your bigs and say you got to stand him up, slow him down, and, and that's what Travis Steele is, is, has done. I think Watson's going to have to become accustomed to not being doubled today. Yeah. Yeah. There's a beautiful scoop to the hoop by Colby Jones. 29 to 21, largest lead of eight for the Musketeers. That's he the guy. Pans it. Yeah, that's that other scorer you were talking about. Like he has the ability, and sometimes when you miss shots or you're struggling, and I played with Hall of Fame shooters throughout my years of playing basketball, and they say the same thing. Sometimes your mind is, is the thing that's keeping you from making shots. Have to stay confident. Fremantle, there's that skill set you were talking about. Little up and under move in his game. And it's 31 to 24. He's got five. He's just smooth. He, he doesn't, never seems like he's in trouble and never out of control. Another takeaway. Here comes Scruggs. That ball was tipped. And Gant pulls it out of there. Reeves again. It's a thing of beauty. Great elevation. But deflections, Timmy, you know how I feel about deflections. They should be an official stat. Absolutely. I mean, they, they are so disruptive, and that one leading to a steal, and then a three-pointer at the other end for Providence. Jones with the dump down to Fremantle. He finds Carter on the wing. Watson the rebound. Boy, he is really solid on the glass. But you see what he did there? He went straight up to go get the rebound with two hands. Most bigs would foul trying to get that rebound over the back. That was an errant shot by Reeves. A little quick, maybe, after the curl. The kids call that a heat check, Timmy. That's what they're calling it nowadays. <laughs> is that what it is? Yeah. <laughs> On that drive to the basket, another foul on the dribble drive. Those changing defenses, Timmy, they really affect what you're doing on offense if you're Xavier, and it leads to this three-pointer, the deflection, the kick ahead. Shooting from deep has generally been a problem for them, but uh, they warmed up early today. But Duke, though, just picked up his second foul. So he'll have to play smart the rest of this half. Ed knows that he's got a veteran player out there. And Xavier's been living at the line, getting to the free throw line far more often than Providence. They are now six out of 12. They really haven't converted to the extent that they could have, and this lead would be larger than it is. Four and a half minutes remaining in the opening half. Reed surveying and gives it up to Duke. A little show and go that time, right in front of Juan Odom. He says, so I like this matchup. He's got a quick release. It's 31 29. A Baker's dozen for David Duke. Really, Cooley can't afford to get him out with two fouls. He just has to be aware, obviously, but his teammates also have to be aware. That's why you see them now back in that zone, yeah. trying to protect him a little bit. Fremantle. Oh, unable to get that one to go, and Duke pulls it down. Watson, ball game when he gets it there usually. 
and he is going to be fouled. He's upset with himself that he didn't get the hoop and the harm, but the foul is on Fremantle, his first. When you're this good, you just say, okay, he's guarding me, but he's not good enough. Nothing but nylon for the Duke. <laughs> I say big night because you and I will be in Bloomington for the Hoosiers and the Boilers. That's always a, a war when those get together and you look at this league that is so very Man. deep. Mike, the course he's got right now, nine in, but after watching what happened the other night and that steal in East Lansing that the Boilermakers got, look out, we could be talking 10 or 11 again real soon. It, it just feels like every season we're talking about not only their depth, but just how good they are going to be in tournament play. Now, Michigan, yeah, I don't know if there's a national champion in that mix right there, but I'll tell you what, there's no conference that has a better chance of yeah. getting that national champ in this conference. There's going to be a lot of two, three, four, fives, <laughs> right? That's absolutely Seeds right. Coming out of the Big Ten Conference. I, I, Juwan Howard and the job he's done, I, I don't think he's getting enough credit. Oh, no, it's very rare that Michigan is undervalued, but they really are this season. Watson at the free throw line. He's really not gotten in rhythm. Did have that uh, alley-oop slam. But uh, to this point, you got to give Fremantle and Carter a lot of credit. Carter particularly in doing the job and making him, you know, maybe get the ball a little further away from the basket than he would like. Well, Watson's, I think he's defending himself. I, he, there are bodies there, but no one's really stopping him. He's missed a couple of bunnies. We know he has struggles from the foul line, so it's not a the worst thing in the world for Xavier if they put him there. But he, he's got to continue to do what he's been doing, and, and his teammates are keeping him yeah. involved. Well, David Duke to this point has just been outstanding in helping keep Providence in gear. They trailed at one point by eight. They whittled it down to two. Shot clock at two as this one's launched, and there's another deflection by Duke. And with Breed, the youngster that we touched on at the outset out of Georgia in that backcourt, along with Duke, Watson and A.J. Reeves. They're the five on the floor for PC. Duke goes to Reeves. They're the five on the floor for PC. Duke goes crossover on the drive and is fouled. And that's a, he's fortunate to get that. Alan Breed ran through <laughs> to that right block as David Duke was making his move, and that's just feel. Take a look, when you run through, you gotta get out of there. You, you can't bring your defender to your teammate attacking. That's just a feel thing, that's a timing. He'll get it, he'll get it again. He's only been playing about 10 minutes a game or so. Yeah, take a look. I mean, he's, he's right here. You got to get out of there, young fella. And now you bring your defender, but because David Du, you know, can move that body up in the air. A he, like a, a wide receiver on a corner route, and a guy running a crossing pattern doesn't stop his route, and then he runs an extra defender into where yeah. the pass is being thrown. That happens a lot in football, too. But there are worse things that yeah. your, your freshman point guard can do. If, if that's the worst thing he does, I think Eddie Cooley will be fine with that today. <laughs> Scruggs up and under. Little French pastry on that one. Couldn't get it to go, though. Oh, them in traffic. Beautiful pass. Just a beautiful pass, and Fremantle dumps it in. And, and you want to tell big guys you don't need to put it on the floor, but he had to in that situation. Two guys jumped, so he didn't travel. He put it down and used the rim to go underneath, almost defending the defenders. You know, Donnie, we've seen, I think, the best of these two teams in flashes in the first half. Really well played from an offensive standpoint. Now, a put back for Watson. Sometimes you just get it on the rim and let him be quicker to the ball. Five for him, it's 33-32. Can't be tentative against Xavier. You know, their defense is, is terrific. And, and if you're tentative, then you don't give your big an opportunity to go get an offensive rebound. There's a turnover by Wilcher. That's the fifth overall. Dude Too easy. makes them pay. Too easy. And the Friars have now fought back to the lead. 34-33. They're on a 13-4 run. College basketball, you talk about making the simple play, sharing the ball, but defensively, stop the ball. That, that is so important when a guy like David Duke's coming at you. How about the dexterity of Scruggs? 
Really got into no man's land there, lost his dribble and said, I'll, I'll use the left hand. Xavier by one, one and change remaining in the opening half. a little too quick. Nichols was anticipating that time, and Watson couldn't catch up to it. That's the eighth turnover committed by the Friars. And that's what we talked about in the open, Tim. Watson is going to be available. I mean, his best ability is his availability. Yeah. And he, he's always available, but you have to make it easier on him as a teammate. Throw it to the target he's giving you. That's, Don't lead him. Throw it to him. That's an example of what Ed was talking to us about last night. A lot of times, guys just anticipate, and they get in a rush. Sometimes you got to let the game come to you. Jones could not connect, and the rebound brought in by Nichols. See the shot clock, game clock differential. Right at 15 seconds. Great pressure from two. And it's pulled away by Xavier. Wiltshire rejected by Nichols. Shot clock off. They can hold it for one if they like. Really dodged a bullet there. David Duke turning that ball over. He did. Yep. Not how you want to finish a half. Yeah, and he, he has not forced it until really then. Yeah. Any doubt that he's going to take this play? Gave it up. And on the ball fake, it does not fall from Gant. Really surprised that Duke gave that one up. But he did. But look at that. He has 16 of the 34 for Providence. And this is a Xavier team, though, that went on a run themselves. And we've got a 35-34 score. That's the end of our half. We'll send you to Mike Hill in Los Angeles for the Jeep Grand Cherokee Halftime Report right after this. Cooley and Steele going at it with their teams, the Friars and the Musketeers. You're watching Big East Basketball on Fox. A one-point game. Xavier leading at 35-34 with Donnie Marshall, Tim Brando. When you're playing against Providence, the two guys you are concerned with are Duke and Watson. But to this point, Ed Cooley's got to be a little concerned. Only three shots at the basket by his big foe. In 16 minutes, that's just unacceptable for Nate Watson. He's given you seven rebounds, so reward the big fella. But he's going to continue to play. That's what this kid's character is. Duke was perfect from downtown. Did miss a couple of dribble drives. Well, his only misses. But as you mentioned, this is not a team known at being proficient in three-point shooting, and that's really what kept them in the game down in a late run at the end of the first half. Carter and Fremantle can't get together, and they turn it over. Duke almost lost his dribble, had to give it up because he was in trouble of a double dribble. A.J. Reeves has it rejected after receiving the pass. And it's important for the starters for Providence to be efficient, to, to be smart defensively, take care of the ball. In the first half, Xavier's bench was was just terrific. 16 to 2. And that is huge for Travis Steele. And you talked about how he likes to play a lot of guys working out. A little Euro move there that time by Scruggs. Can't get it to go. Everything but the finish there. They get him high marks stylistically, but he could not get it to go. You know what those are worth, Timmy? Yeah. <laughs> style point? No. Yeah. <laughs> well, career TV guy. I'm all about style. <laughs> right? <laughs> Talk about substance. How about that move Boy. defensively? I think he knew it, too. Scruggs trying to make good on defense. There you and go. Watson uses the window. Gets it to go. This is a good game. You know what? As a player, you always think, okay, you want to win. You want to play great. But it's a good game to learn about yourself, too. You know, Scruggs is not going to give David Duke anything. And if Duke just, if he's lackadaisical with the ball, you saw what potentially could happen. Strong move to the basket by Colby Jones, and that enables J Jason Carter to be the rim runner. And he gives the Musketeers a one-point lead. 90 seconds gone by here in the second half. Duke, oh, they ran away from him. Oh, you can't do that. When the defender just runs away, he's going to drain it. That's 19. Somebody's got to check him. 
Hey, you, you don't foul a shooter, and you don't leave them all alone. I realize you had a switch there, uh, Donnie, but <laughs> nobody came over to switch. Scruggs can't connect, and it's pulled down by Watson. Alan Breed getting the start. There's a turnover. Fremantle in the open floor. The trailer picks up the loose chains. Count it. And a foul. The trailer being Nate Johnson. Great body control. Hanging. Wait for that whistle and letting it go. That's just unfortunate there. You got to know what you're doing. No one to pass to. It just slips out of his hand. And then look at the hang and the finish. Nichols with the foul, his second. We've got nine Musketeers now in the scoring column. It shows you the depth that they have. Everyone that's played is in the box score. And I think that time maybe we're going to get a root out foul. Is that what we're going to get? Yeah, Ed Cooney is upset at that call, and he's letting O'Connell know about it. He felt Fremantle had gone over the top, and that's the third on Nichols. Watch the lower yeah, right, body right here. there. Yeah, and the hook. The hook and then the, the yeah. push, but it's just a bad box out. When you box out, it's not to stand, it's to, to walk backwards. Walk your guy away from the basket. Great defensive work by Alan Breed and a quick frustration foul by Xavier. That goes against Scruggs. Just his first. Travis Steele, 39 years young. Promoted to top assistant before the 2018 season by Chris Mack, and this is um, this is the job that he always wanted. He's a, really a lifer at Xavier. Jones really pressuring Alan Breed. And off the dribble, Duke can't get it to go. Well, if he's outside the arc, it's it's Drano. If he's inside, and that was too close. Yeah, he was a little too close. <laughs> Out of bounds, last touch by Providence. They run that flex offense, and it seems, visually, it seems gummed up. Like it's just jammed up. There's no spacing, and, and that's what a flex offense does if you stay right up the, the, the lane. But it's really to try to get uh, something on the post down low, not necessarily a jump shot. Johnson! Well, the Gardner-Webb transfer from out of Miami drops it home at a career high 29 points on the strength of eight threes when he was playing there and uh, got that at high point. It's amazing where Steele will find these guys. Division two, Gardner-Webb, he'll find them. Fremantle with that rebound. Paul Scruggs gives it up to Johnson again. This one's taken down, the rebound off the deck by Colby Jones. And another takeaway, Watson clears it. Duke, beautiful move by David Duke. He has that next gear, that long stretch out to use both hands, really is special. Well, this is his 10th career 20-point game. And we got a lot of time remaining just over four minutes gone here in the second half he could put up a 40 spot he has that kind of capability yeah what's interesting about him is he's not one of those kids that wants to score 40 you know on his own right he would love to play within the confines of the team and get it that way it's hard to find kids like that once they get it going i, I know once i got it going yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to get 40. Yeah. It's like giving me a microphone. <laughs> that one's too Won't strong. Shut up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Beautiful move on the other end by Colby Jones. This kid has some quickness that would rival a David Duke. You can see why they were so high on him. His brother played at Arkansas and at Middle Tennessee State, so he. Comes from a basketball family. There's Watson, beautiful lob into him, but great work by Carter to come over and help defensively. Well, he might have gotten slapped a little on the arm yeah. going up. I think Cooley did too. I think Cooley felt that way as well. This foul will go on Scruggs, his second. Take a look at Kobe Jones from Mountain Brook.
Alabama. Jack with that cold. Mutual insurance. Only pay for what you need. And this guy will give you everything you need. David Duke. Keeps the game simple, too. Uh, sees the double starting to come. Has the ability to turn over that right shoulder. And then there, you just, just can't happen when any guy who's got it going, you can't leave the basketball. And he understands when to attack and when to pull up. Ed would tell you that even with the accolades, okay, he works hard, but needs to be more demanding. He wants him to take the game over even more. And to some extent, that's what he's done today. And I, in large measure, I think, because Watson had not been effective in the first half. He needed to. Just got such great size, too. You, you know, there are a ton of guards in college basketball who can, who can shoot the ball. They can score in every different way. But the size that David Duke has at 6'5", 6'6", really, in, in my opinion, sets him apart and, and gets him ready for that next level, without a doubt. I, I got to tell you, I really believe as this game develops, we're going to see even more from Paul Scruggs because as uh, Duke goes for Providence, you can make the same case for Xavier. Scruggs is taking a little time off now. Dwayne Odom, Dwight Odom has come into the game for him. And there you see from downtown another train. This time it's Greg Gant out of Trinity Christian School, Fayetteville, North Carolina. Had a career-high nine in their last outing against Creighton. Because Duke is playing so well and Xavier will overhelp a little bit, they're trying to try to slow him down. You have to be ready if you are wearing a black uniform to be ready to score. You are going to be open. Yeah. And they go back into that zone, and the Musketeers had a little difficulty at dealing with it already now. Yet another turnover. That's 11 that have been committed by the Musketeers. Watson forced that one a little bit. Yeah, looking for the contact. Great job by Fremantle to get out of the way. Reeves is that third score you were talking about. David Duke's got it up against the clock. He's going to have to jack it up. A little teardrop. Out of bounds, last touched by Duke. You know, a lot of times the shooting percentage can be affected when you're taking those shots up against the clock, as was the case with Duke that time. He's really struggled inside the yard. At this half, Providence is 4 out of 12. So uh, they're becoming more mortal from the floor, which is their M.O. A beautiful pass in rhythm to set up Nate Johnson. He's got a real smooth game, doesn't it? Oh, he's feeling it. Got the and one, then the three, and then there, another jumper. It's one of those guys in Providence, you can't let him get going because you're so concerned about Fremantle or Scruggs. You know, this was a team that had Najee Marshall all those years, and I think when you lose a guy like him, it really helps to get a, a veteran player that has a skill set, and he's he's the perfect transfer to plug in at Xavier. 47 44 and again up against the clock it goes away that's really good defense and you, you run at a guy long but once shooters get into a zone it's tough he had struggled in the last couple of games but uh, they like him and they told him to keep shooting stay confident Travis will talk to his players individually every week and uh, he did that with Scruggs just this week. That little jumper from Fremantle goes crying, but he collected the offensive rebound to get a recycle. Gets it back, and I think walked. On the ball fake as he was making his move. He tried to do a little too much. You say what you want about junk defenses, changing it up, whatever it is. Providence is his... They really caused some problems they have. Well inside the yard Absolutely. with that zone. Whenever they go 2-3, and the guy that I think of all the time, there were two of them really, Massimino was one, but the other was Jim Valvano. Yeah. I mean, he just had junk defense after junk defense during the heyday at North Carolina State. With a super roll that won't go for Reeves, into in Fremantle. And a great save there defensively by Gant to get down the floor to disrupt that number one making the play as Fremantle end to end. Big fella trying to be rewarded but wasn't.
you. And uh, how about winning without? Without book night, UConn gets a win. And without a basket in nine minutes, Seton Hall manages victory against DePaul. And without Marcus Zigorowski, all right, the Blue Jays gets the job done. Denzel Mahoney with 24, the best in his Creighton career. I mean, that, a, lot of, a lot of people believe in Seton Hall and Creighton. I do, too. And I, but I do think there's some other teams that can jump into that thing. Obviously, Villanova has been the kingpin for such a long time. But you wonder about Jay's team because of this pause and because of the, the lack of an opportunity to gain chemistry. I, I've tried to resist, but I, I, at some point, I, I have to step up and just tell people UConn is back in the Big East, and, and, they and they're back in the Big East in a, in a big way. And their, their fans, you live in that area, their fans are so excited about it, too. I mean, it, Danny Hurley has guys who can yeah. shoot the ball. You know, most of his teams at, at URI, they were just grinded out guys, and, and they were never great three-point shooting teams. His team can shoot, and with book night, what, what made me think about them was when they won without him. That, that right. to me, tells yeah. you the true sign of a, of a very, very good team. Uh, nice move inside by Nichols. And, you know, having them back in the league means that Providence has got that automatic regional rivalry again. Yeah, uh, they're going to be wars <laughs> when those two play. I spent, I spent some time on the golf course with Ed Cooley <laughs> and, and, and talked to, to Kevin Willard. And those were probably the two guys who liked it the least. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that area, that's who they recruit. Scruggs unable to get it to go. That's generally, when you hear the coaches say that, that means it's really good for the league. Yeah. <laughs> Inside, nice move by the soft hands of Watson. You just wonder when or if Xavier will do something differently, either more pressure on the ball to, to not make those interior passes so easy, or they double down on Nate Watson, because I just can't imagine that they're, they're not going to keep giving him touches. And Ed Cooley's probably told his team, listen, that's where our bread is buttered, down low with him first. And another rebound by the big fella. He's been a constant on the boards. He's got nine already, so he's one bucket away from a double-double. He's got nine points and nine rebounds. Odom is coming to the game along with Kunkel. Griffin is out there as well. And Paul Scruggs and Fremantle make up the five on the deck for the rerun donned Xavier Musketeers. And up against the clock, Nichols drains it. And Ed Cooley likes Jimmy Nichols. You, you can see why a little bit there. Defensively, he gets a little lost at times, but he's such a, an athletically gifted player. Fremantle. And a tip in by Griffin, the big fella, attacking the glass. We touched on these transfers. This young man is a heck of a story from Division II Mercy College. Steele really believes he's got a chance to be a difference maker. Be the next Kiki Tandy, perhaps, who was a difference maker particularly a year ago. Ball is loose. Scruggs comes away with it. Outlet to Fremantle. Boy, does he run the floor. Everything with the finish. He's really frustrated with himself offensively. Yeah, he's missed a couple of easy ones. Well, that, that's a simple play he should make. Sometimes you, you think about the contact before the basket. There's Watson again. Griffin a little slow to get over defensively. He took advantage of him. 11 points, so they have clearly identified the issue with Nate Watson since halftime. Nate Watson, we know, is a load, and Xavier has to understand as well as this game gets under the nine-minute mark that they're going to he's they're going to need some help on him. Take a look at him down here as we roll it on the block. There's a little bit of a mismatch. Hold it right here as he catches it. You see. He's down low, but what has to happen is you need a little bit of defensive help here. There's no way Xavier has the wherewithal, as good as they are defensively, to guard him one-on-one. -on -one. And he's, he's catching the ball also in awesome spots. Here, loses it, but he gets it right back. There has to be more ball pressure, Tim, but there also has to be, it's not a full double team, Timmy, 
you got to fake at him and get out. Make him uncomfortable. That's how you do well, it. It's not just standing there and letting him come to your chest. It's faking, getting out, faking, getting out. We touched on it in the first half. He may have been surprised. Ed Cooley, I know, was surprised that they didn't double. Yeah. But now he's aware, and you can see the fluidity in his offensive game because he knows that double team really isn't coming. You got you to gotta zhuzh it up a little bit, Timmy. Zhuzh it up. Just, 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 <laughs> just act like you're going to go down there. If you're not, maybe, maybe you bring a, a double from an, another area on the floor, but it's just too easy for Nate Watson, and his teammates are helping him because they're giving him good passes. His fifth career double-double is fourth of this season. And again, he struggled mightily, taking only three shots in the opening half. And it's happened at just the right time because Duke has cooled. He's only two out of five from the floor in this half. Huckle, strong drive by yet another transfer as we touched on. The young man from Belmont out of the city of Nashville, 53-52. You know, this got to feel comfortable for him to be in Cincinnati this close to Kentucky, just over the bridge where he prepped in high school. Watson. <laughs> there was help from Carter that time, and he just used his massive girth to get it up there. I wish we just had one camera on him. He is directing <laughs> traffic. He's pointing the guys where to get to to make the interior pass easier. He's calling guys over. He wants to set a screen for him. Johnson, not to be. Watson hauls down yet another rebound, his 11th. Duke, along with Gant, A.J. Reeves, Watson and Nichols, the five on the floor for Providence. That's a good read. That's a great read by David Duke, and just a, a beautiful little slide out by Watson to be open for that shot. I mean, it, it, to understand when your teammate is driving, to get away from him to create yeah. a shot for both of you. Scruggs picks up the loose change. Kunkel pumps from three. Out of bounds. It'll belong to Xavier underneath. He's just such a, a you know, a, a special big Nate Watson. And, and it's not just about this area. Look, he recognizes double teams coming. I'm going to turn away. I'm going to shoot over the top. This right here, though, is special. Get away, create some space. Mid-range jumper. Elementary, my dear Watson. <laughs> Summary sponsored by Professor gets slammed up savings today. Duke has gotten some help in the second half from his big guy. Moving in on a career high performance is Nate Watson with rebounding. 14 is his career high. He's got 12 right now, and he has stepped it up here in the second half, and not surprisingly. It's the benefit of having upperclassmen. When you have a voice like Ed Cooley at halftime who says, listen, we have to do X, Y, and Z, they're going to do it or they know the repercussions. Yeah. And, and they've really done a better job of, of getting in the ball. Now, you have to understand as well, when you throw it to him down there, he's going to score. He's not a, a, a passer out of that post, and you don't want him to be in a game like this. Xavier's two out of their last ten. Counted on a foul. Kunkel has made a difference. He ran away from Gantt. And Greg picked up the foul to go with it. It's a great play, but it's also a terrific job of curling. Look at the action. There's no one really over there to help. David Duke has to kind of be there, but there's a shooter in Scruggs out on that wing. And that's, again, Dunkel showing you that he's not lightning fast. He's just so efficient with his movements. Well, you mentioned veteran players, and, and this is really a veteran team, too, for Xavier. But a lot of them are transfers, some grad transfers. And they're still getting accustomed to, to playing with one another. There's a trap. That's surprise Providence and results in a turnover. The pass, though, hung in the air. Great save by Fremantle, or he was going to lose it. And he finishes it off. That ball hung in the air a long time. And he basically tapped it back to himself. He's got 11 to lead the Musketeers. There's not a lot of pressure in college basketball today, full court especially, so you have to always remember the middle of the court is your friend. You catch that thing just in the corner at half court, nothing good happens there. 
in traffic and needs some help. That's the right guy to find right there. Duke counted from downtown. Good players really know how to, to make big shots. I thought he should have caught it and shot it the first time. Catches it, almost makes it a, a little bit tougher shot, but that's how good he is. Partner, we've had as many lead changes as cups of coffee this morning. <laughs> this is right. the 21st lead change <laughs> in, in our game. Kunkel again finding Scruggs from downtown, and he'll answer. And you saw why that last play where Kunkel turned the corner, why David Duke really couldn't help because he had Scruggs on the other side. That time he stays in and, and Scruggs makes him pay for it. Well, Duke and Scruggs down the stretch. You, they're mano a mano right now, and, and you got to believe if this game stays close, it's going to come down to to those two guys. And that's a pass we were talking about earlier, Timmy, where you just can't throw the ball anywhere. You know, there's going to be some help back there. Uncle Fremantle keeping it alive. Carter down there, too. It's actually Carter that tried for the tip end, but Fremantle came away with a rebound and is the recipient of this foul. And, and this is exactly, take a look at Johnson right there, middle of your screen. He sees what's coming. That's terrific help. But the passer has to see that as well. How about just a little ball fake? Then see how the defense reacts. Way to click, get it cleared out, then throw a better pass. David Duke got the foul, his third. Dunk a beautiful pass to Fremantle. Bounce pass variety in the post. Boy, that was special. He's got just a, a, a uncle, just a nice, cute little game to him, you know? Yeah, just it really does. Simple. That's a nice little bounce pass in the paint there. Well, his playing time has been huge in this game, and he's playing with a lot of confidence. <laughs> he's got those eye goggles working. How about that? There's your focus. <laughs> Tony Marshall, who hails from Seattle before he became a great star in basketball, loves soccer like our friend Rob Stone. And this is a yet another middle of the table <laughs> mid -table, game. Mid table yeah. contest. That's exactly what they call it in soccer. Not 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 at the very bottom and, and not at the top. It makes it that much more important to try to eke out any win you can. And I think it puts a lot of pressure on the home team, too. You know, I mean, it really does. And there's a reach-in foul. I think they're going to tag Nichols with it after the ball was knocked away. So another turnover created out of the timeout. Nichols with his fourth foul. Can't stress how important it is and how frustrating it can be to run stuff out of timeouts. And when it doesn't happen, right out of a timeout, as you see Nichols there with his fourth personal, it's so frustrating for coaches. We just talked about this. You step on the floor, and now we turn the ball over. Green angle. Beautiful little jump hook, but can't get it to go. Nichols... Claims the rebound. These two right here, down the stretch, you just have to believe it's going to be Duke and Scruggs. Both very special. That time Scruggs won defensively, and Carter gets it out to Kunkel. Great passing. Delivering the dime to Fremantle. Kunkel. And the lead up to five. It's an 11-3 run, 7-0 spurt in the last 93 seconds. Providence has to either commit to sending guys to the offensive glass or retreating. When you get caught in the middle, that's what happens. You're playing catch-up, and it's a layup at the other end. And uh, on the show, Carter will pick up the foul against Duke. Two fouls on him. That. This is just great fast break. Ball doesn't touch the floor. Yeah. Uncle. Yeah. Our game reset and timeouts in a game like this certainly matter late. And possession arrows, too, as Michigan State found out on Friday night, the possession arrow can be key. And you see the foul story. And time for Above and Beyond, brought to you by Jersey Mike's Sub. Be a sub above. You knew what you were getting on that left side of your screen. But for Xavier and, and Travis Steele, when you play multiple guys, you're going to get some really good games yeah. by guys you don't really talk about all the time. And Nate Johnson's trying to change that. He's yeah. trying to get his name in the lights every game. And Fremantle coming off the pine is new. You know, he earned all freshman honors a year ago. But the combination of he and Carter, Jason Carter does all the little things, and, and Steele loves him. And yeah, Watson's going to have his numbers at the end of the day, but 
He has handled as best he can the load that is Nate Watson. Duke, count it. Rattling it home again. It won't be the last time you hear his name. Three and a half remaining, the lead is two. When they run their stuff, they affect you high and low, meaning you have to know where Nate Watson is on that low block, but you got to know where Duke is out on the, on the exterior. And there's Carter again, doing the job again. It, it just can't happen. That pass from there to there can't happen. That's why you, you use those long arms. You, you, you got to get him up. Feed and fan the big fella. Great pass inside, sort of a point forward maneuver there by Nichols to get it inside to Watson, 66 to 64. So important to communicate when you're in any type of full court, half court pressure. Yell to a teammate, baseline coming through, high post coming through, you have to talk. Kunkel, off the heel, pulled down by Reeves. And he gets it into Duke's hands. Oh, Reeves will launch. There's that third score you were talking about at the outset. AJ with a payday. And it's 67 66 Providence. I think most people would say that's a bad shot, but for a guy who you believe to be a shooter, he needs to take those shots. Well, baseline bounce pass leads to a turnover, and now the Friars get it back. This happens because of what's going on down low. Now you're paying attention to baseline Johnson scrambling, and now that leaves David Duke wide open at the top. And now that's on the on the perimeter. Now down low, you get there too late. And, and Nate Watson knows how to make you pay. But when Providence runs their stuff to completion, they're just so difficult to guard because of that. Right outside inside game now this is a really a it appears that um, Nichols may have a little problem with one of his legs or Charlie horse they're gonna tend to him now as Portland comes into the game for him I thought for a moment it was a defense for offense substitution because of his four fouls but no he's he's cramped up cramping, yeah yep here's Horkler who has gotten some playing time of late I mean, it's hard to stay hydrated in the winter. I know not for you. <laughs> in moderation. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> There's Duke. Beautiful. Great flash. They found him right where they wanted. He's got 30. We thought he could get a 40 spot, but he's played within the structure of the offense, and he's got 30. 70 to 66. Scruggs tries to answer. And the quick tap out gets into Duke's hands. 90 seconds left. This is a huge defensive sequence now for the Musketeers trailing by four. It's the second time in his career David Duke has had 30. Horkler for three. It's your guy. Oh, boy. That's your guy. How about that? From Melbourne Beach, Florida with love. He can shoot it. You asked Eddie about that yep. last night. You said, tell me about Horkler. I like yep. this kid. That's it. I, I, I know why. Oh, yeah. Not bashful. <laughs> Got those blonde locks working, too. Well, how do you get a lead on the road? <laughs> you make five of your last five shots, and that's exactly what Providence has done. Before that break, outside, inside, outside, really keeping Xavier off balance, but David Duke opening things up for all of his teammates and Horkler, three ball corner pocket. And this is the only thing I believe. If Providence made three, maybe four more threes a game, they'd right. be undefeated. They yep. really would. I mean, Absolutely. they've been in a lot of games they when they struggled from behind that three-point arc, and now they're knocking them down. This is what I think Ed Cooley envisioned for his guys, the inside-out yep. progress that you're seeing yep. today. He was a great player, Horkler, at North Florida, mm -hmm. sat out after transferring, and he's got versatility in his game. And that three ball is knocked down by Nate Johnson. It's transfer on transfer here. That was big. I mean, that was NBA range. David Duke was right in his face. We've got to live with that. Here comes the trap. Got a foul, though. Travis Steele not happy. Lawrence Armstrong said there was a reach. Well, whether it was a foul or not, 
Timmy, you got to understand, look at the shot clock. It's right in front of you. Yep. You don't have to reach in to steal it. You're going to get the violation if you just wait one or two more clicks with your body. And I remember now, Xavier will have to foul twice more to get Providence into the one and one. Actually, three technically, technically times. There'll be three before they can get there. There's a quick giveaway by Cuckle. And he forced the wall. He wanted the foul. Instead, Reed, the freshman, took the extra step. Wow. That's the 14th Providence turnover. I don't know about that. I didn't see it. I thought it was a foul. Yeah. <laughs> I he thought it was it. a foul. Yeah. I mean, didn't really, the, he didn't give the, the offensive player a chance to yeah. come down and I turn. Mean, so I, I, I'm with you. I don't agree with that. There was, a walk, there was a walk, but, there, but it was after contact. Fremantle from the top of the key. That's a big call. Woo, a huge call. Big time. 73-71. Now you get to play straight D. You don't have to worry about getting fouls. And Ed Cooley will take a timeout. He's still beside himself over yeah. that foul not being called and a walk instead. That was a free possession for Xavier. And they took advantage of it. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's a tough one. And you talked about it. We, we, we have a, a veteran crew here, but sometimes the refs are human, too. If something looks out of the ordinary, your instinct is to, to blow the whistle and, and call that. But I thought that was probably a block before the travel. I did, too. 36 seconds left. Okay, now with this much time and 15-second differential between shot and game clock, I mean, you got to figure, right? It's either your veteran from outside or your veteran inside. But uh, what, what, what say you? If Nate Watson, you got to understand, when Nate Watson catches the ball down low, he's not passing it. <laughs> that's just what it is. Yeah. And that's okay because he's efficient. He's a scorer. But if he's defended with just one Xavier player, you have to throw the ball inside. If there are two, I think you swing the ball around and it ends up with David Duke. And he doesn't necessarily need to shoot a three. I think this is that time of the game where you put the pressure yeah. not only on the defense, but you put it on the officials as well. Right. We just saw maybe a questionable call at the other end. David Duke has to use his size. If he has an open three, take it. Right. But otherwise, use your body, put some pressure, get to that rim and try to get fouled. This is a critical stretch for Providence playing four of their next five on the road. Five of their next seven. And Marquette is Tuesday. I mean, it is a quick turnaround. You'll be able to see it on FS1. But this would be a huge win for them on the road, yeah. given what lies ahead with their schedule. And you don't care what the team's records are when uh -oh. you when you get on the road. You gotta play basketball. Who cares what the records are? Okay. 15 to shoot, 30 to play. There's the dump down to Watson. The ball was deflected. Last touched by Scruggs. A great job by Scruggs to come over and help. We didn't see a lot of that earlier in the game, and, and maybe that was by design. You change up the looks, make it more uncomfortable with the game on the line. Well, you wonder sometimes maybe if that great out-of-bounds play, this is, could be perfect, actually be a break for you when you're up against the shot clock. This is where those great scouting reports come in handy, yeah. right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. I think we're going to take a look at it to see if, in fact, the ball deflected off of Watson, in which case Xavier would have possession. So Brian O'Connell and Clarence Armstrong are going to go take over, along with Lamar Simpson, to take a look here. Very similar situation to what we saw Friday night in East Lansing when Purdue did get the deflection possession of the ball and essentially had a five-point sequence in the last 19 seconds. I didn't see a lot. Maybe a couple more clicks came off the clock. Let's see who it went off of. All right. Hard to tell. Remember, the ball was the ball was uh, given to Providence. I don't know that with no other angle beyond that one that you can change it. As is oftentimes the case, uh, once it's ruled one way, mm -hmm. that indefensible or irrefutable video evidence is a difficult thing to overcome and change once it's been made on the floor the way it was. It's a 
good song for both coaches right now. They, <laughs> Shaka Khan, they want to hear something yeah. good both ways. Here, let's take a look now. This might be the best angle we have, and no, I, I think Scruggs touched it last. They got the right call. I just I yeah. think that they're trying to – they added – I think they're just trying to look to see if they're going to add something back on the clock. I don't know. Yeah. That's the right call, I, I believe. Yeah. And, and perfect, really, for an, uh, the hip pocket out of bounds play that you, you feel like is always going to work. That's what you run. Eddie, one of the best at out of bounds unders. Guys have to run it, though. Pop out. Scruggs again with those quick hands. Almost got the pilfer against Reeves. Uh, the uh, ball went out of bounds. So five seconds remains on the shot clock. And now your inbounds pass from a different angle. Tough angle, really. Nichols, he got aggressive. Did he step out of bounds? He did. It's a great job defensively because you get it into anyone besides Reeves, Duke, Watson. You're in good shape. Right there. Yeah. So now you got exactly what you wanted if you're Xavier. The last shot with 16.2 remaining. 15 turnovers now committed by Providence, and that last one really hurt. Well, we're going to take you back now to December 20th. You may be thinking, do they go for the three at home for the win, or do you go for the extension to overtime? Well, in their Big East opener, December 20th against Marquette, Adam Kunkel had the game-winning three as time expired to give the Musketeers the 91 to 88 win. And you got to figure he's one of the guys that could be taking that last shot, if not Scruggs. But let me pose that question to you. When you're at home, do you go ahead and play for overtime as opposed to on the road when you're more likely maybe to try to steal it? and play for the three to get out of town? I think your initial thought is look, it, college basketball coaches are conservative. Let's, let's be honest. They're not trying to set the world on fire. You want to try to give your – and if you have some depth like Xavier does, yeah. get your tie, get something going strong to the basket, and then you get into your overtime. And now maybe – Maybe on the other side, they're a little bit more worn down because you, you had these numbers coming at them. So I would absolutely say you got to play for the for the tie. But do you take the early two? Do you run the risk of, of maybe allowing Providence if you're driving to the basket to maybe have a, another possession if you get the or do you hold it? Best available. Okay. Uh, that, that's what I was always taught. You take the best available. There, by no means are you going to see a lane to the basket when that clock is down to 10 and not take it. All right, you see the story. 16.2 remaining. And no more timeouts for Xavier. And the Musketeers have not shot well at the line, so if, if you're Providence, you want to be aggressive, put them there, why not? Here we go. Paul Scruggs, we mentioned he and Duke would be at the end the guys that could make the difference. Kunkel again. Wrap around. Over to Scruggs on the wing. There's a ball fake. Out deep. Jones! Colby Jones with the tray. He delivers with point one remaining. The kid from Mountain Brook, Alabama. Hello. How do you do? Wow. That was defended as well as I think. You could defend it if you want to leave a guy open. Jones has to be uh, the guy you would say, hey, we, 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 you know, we'll pick our poison. Well, they're wearing the wow. rerun uniforms. Gosh. We're going to rerun. The passing, Timmy. We're going to rerun one I mean, for you now. Take a look at this passing. They oh. are spaced out, unselfish, aware of the clock. Boy, oh boy. I mean, in perfect rhythm, too. And the three came by their offense. It's Listen. not something they forced. 
Kobe Jones on the season now is two for nine from three. <laughs> That's the guy Providence wanted to leave open. But again, you throw up those numbers. Late game with the game on the line. Uh, now I think I think Travis Steele calls uh, Kobe Jones his Swiss Army knife. He can play three positions. He was touted right away as a possible starter coming out of Mountain Brook, Alabama. And boy, oh boy, has his versatility shown. But you just got to throw something near the rim and oh. a heartbreak hotel for Providence. And Xavier gets out of here with a win. And you can make the case that they had to steal it. Such a well-played game by both teams. Yeah. These are the games you hate to see someone have to lose. And I got to tell you, partner, that decision to make a walk instead of a foul was big. Was huge. I agree. I agree. Uh, that was a very big call late in this game. Take a look at the numbers on Jones in the last two games. 19 total points in the other five games, but 25 points in the last two games. He had 16 against St. John's. And the Alabama Class 7A Player of the Year, who averaged 25 points per game, is the difference maker in the Big East today. That was some fun, Donnie. That was wonderful. Let's do it next week. Let's, let's, I, yeah. I'm with you. I'll meet you there. <laughs> Matt Gangle was our director today. This game produced by Aaron Stoikoff. For them and our entire Fox Sports crew, Tim Brando for Donnie Marshall, saying our final 74-73. You've been watching Big East Basketball right here on Fox.